What's up guys, it's Daz here. But you don't really care as we have now marked the entire Faron region with all of these shrines in the area. There are eight in total and an unusually like we usually do things that did not make sense. Usually we do shrines from the southernmost point to the northernmost point, but because the Faron region is so horizontal, I actually want to go from west to east and we're going to go along each one of these shrines until pretty much everything is complete. So right off the bat we're going way down to Lakeside Tower right about here. Now you can just about sort of see the stable, oh no you can't, it's very clearly the stable's right over there. We need to go just here because there is a natural bombable rock here for us. Showing us the entrance to the shrine. The Shar Uta Shrine. Alright, halt the tilt. This is all about seesaws. For the basic entire thing, you just need to use stasis and use that to get where you need to be. This will take you to pretty much all the paths you want to go on to. I have to wait until that first one stops. There we go. Did I not just use it? What happened there? I don't know. But anyway, you can use that to go up here and reach this chest, which is just a royal broadsword. Cool. And then the other part of the path will get you up here. Now, this part is supposed to be the little tricky part because it's not just about making a seesaw and using it to get across to actually get you there. You can use stasis all you want on this first one, but that second one over there is still going to mess you up. No amount of jumping is going to save you. Okay, maybe it will. You were supposed to get the first treasure chest and use that to weigh down the first one and use stasis on this one, but apparently that's not the case. But there is a treasure chest over there that we're most likely going to need the chest for. For this, what you really need is momentum, which I can't tell if it's the first or the second gate. I think it's the second gate. You need to use by dropping the uh, treasure chest onto it, and then you can use that to fill yourself up to where you want to be. All right, repeating the technique with the second one. Does not quite give the effect we wanted. Hold on. There we go, and then you can paraglide over to your treasure. Ancient core, nice. All right, now that that is done, we're gonna go way up top to the peak of Riola Spring. So this shrine is nice and simply placed behind this massive waterfall. So let's just fly through, and there it is. This is the Shodasa Shrine. A little overgrown. Impeccable timing. Okay, so this is all about a bunch of balls that need to go into their slots. There's five to do, and they all have different ways to do them. For example, this one obviously shoots you through the blocks, and then you need to aim it onto them there. We'll do that one first, actually. Yeah, sure. Time it like that, and you're perfectly good. And now we get another ball. No, we don't. That's not a ball. What am I thinking? That's a chest, obviously. Da -da -da -da. Lovely. We will use that in a moment. Next, we have a similar thing on the opposite side, except instead of moving blocks that block your path, it's moving blocks that is your path. Time it so that it starts going right, and then, boop, lovely. Give me my another chest, please. Thank you. Oh, you're a bouncy one. Oh, okay, sure. And that is all we actually need to do. We only really needed the small key to access the monk. The other three balls are just there in case you lose them. Another helpful way you can do things is with Cryonis if you really want to. It makes things a lot easier if you feel like doing it that way. Throw them in the water and then use Cryonis to give them steady land. But otherwise, let's go get our monk. Okay, next up we're going to go over to the eastern part of the Floria Falls. We're going to Kalora Lake here. See, this is why you want to come here so late. I have Ravali's Gale to get over the massive bits of land, and when there's water, I can just use the Zora costume to get me going wherever I want. Great. And the lightning, make the Thunderhell makes me impervious to the lightning. Even better. <laughs> I literally could not traverse this place even ever, ever better. Anyway, here is a nice little volcano thing that looks a little bit suspicious. Anyway, once again, this is a Cass Shrine Quest. You can see him very faintly off in the distance over here, just overlooking the lake. So, uh, hey Cass, hope you don't mind the electricity. Let me know what's going on. Very impressive. Not many could make it up here in such rain. I'd expect no less from a well-worn traveller like yourself. Me? I stay nice and dry. My feathers repel the rain rather well. And my instrument was designed to withstand extreme moisture. With your livelihood result, When your livelihood revolves around ancient songs, you gotta be prepared for a few raindrops. I know a song about this place. 
Would you like to hear the ancient verse passed down in this region? Let's hear it. Excellent. Without further ado. There's a puzzle in this somewhere, but as far as I can tell, it could apply to a great many things. Anyway, may the light shine ever on your path. So much for illuminating my path, but oh well, that is a song of storms. You know what that's referring to. Anyway, what we need to do is we need to beckon lightning atop the top of that little mound. It's literally a mound now, finally, after calling everything else a mound. Now, recommendations are you use a metallic weapon so as to not shock yourself, or you can be like me and have the Thunder Helm. You get the, Zor the Zora quest, the Rito quest, and now the, the Gerudo quest. They're all coming together to make me perfect for this environment and available to see the Kuta Nata Shrine. First, though, let's go say something to Cass because I want to see if he says anything new now. Is he going to say illuminate your path this time? I need it. I need that line of dialogue. Even though I've already had it like eight times at this point, but oh well. Ah, so there was a shrine inside that crag split by lightning. The bolt was so ferocious that I was worried I might be struck down myself. I'd say that's worthy of being immortalized in song. Anyway, may the light shine ever on your path. Damn it. Damn it, Cass. I really wanted that. May the light illuminate your path. It works so much better, but... Oh, well. Anyway, let's go and get into our shrine. And this one is just a lovely little blessing. Super easy, nice and helpful, well appreciated. Rubber tights. We now have the full rubber armor set. Beautiful, look at that, I love it. It kind of reminds me of the um, the Vogue clothing I have that's all dark, uh, glow in the dark, but oh well, I like it a lot. Right. Now that that's done, we don't have lightning so much anymore plaguing this place, which is pretty nice. Another place that we've ridded of thunder and rain. Anyway, next up we're going to go way up to almost the East Nakluda region. We're going to the Taran Pass or the Rabella Wetlands. That probably stands out a little more as a landmark, so uh, I'll see you there in just a mo. Alright, here we are, and you will notice that there are three pedestals to be got, and... A side Ryan quest for us as soon as we talk to that pedestal over there. Talk to it? Read it. That would make a lot more sense. What do you have to say for us? The ancient orbs guarded by the giants of Mount Taran lead to the shrine. Okay, this is the three giant brothers. We have to destroy three giant brothers. You can tell where they are by these skeletal markings. So we want to go to the Hanu Pond here. Um... We'll go with that symbol, sure, that makes the most sense. The Rubella Wetlands here, and the Uten Marsh here. They're, you know, just circling the place. So, let's have a go. These are all... Well, let me get that first, and then I'll explain just exactly what these guys are. These are all slightly more stronger versions of your regular Henoxes. Um, I'm pretty sure my last technique with the Vo Armor did not actually protect me, but you never know. So this guy... We'll find out who he is in a minute. First, I'm going to use all my best moves. Beautiful. I have no idea how much damage he's got left or what he's doing, but, you know, I can... That doesn't freeze you, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay. Ooh, Royal Claymore. Good stuff. Hinox, youngest king. These guys are especially powerful. Although not with this guy's strategy right now. Wow, that guy went down nice and quick. Either way, he gives us a ball. Need to do that two other times. Nice. Boop. Next, we're going to the Uten Marsh down here for another one. This guy is the Middlekin. We'll find out about him real soon, I'm sure. Well, maybe we won't. Boop. And the final place we're going is the Rabella Wetlands. Okay, so I made a bad move of whistling and running at the same time. On top of that, I've now, hello, oldest kin, not got Urboza's Fury anymore, but that's okay. A nice little technique you can use, if you wish to know it, is, uh, well, get out of the way when he does that. Oh, uh, lord. 
is... Oh, have I broken it? Oh, he electrocuted him. Someone electrocuted him. That's great. He's got armor on his feet right now. So, if I was to burn it with something, it would uh, disappear. Which is kind of cool. Oh, no, he's got metal stuff. In that case, we want to use electricity a lot more. Because that's what he's going to be weak to a little bit. All right, we're going to get out of your way a little bit. Thank you. Go for that. You know what? Let's just go with a... Yeah, we'll just do... We'll do one of these. A shock arrow, since I never use them anyway. Hi, right, buddy. Oh, you nearly hurt your own cobbling dude, man. I think I missed. I think I'm keep missing. There we go. He's got a lot more armor on that leg so that he can't actually take damage, but he does get shot very easily, meaning he can very easily be taken down. For the most part. Whoa, that ball is spinning. Well, it was. Oh, well. Cool. And I'll take the 300 rupees that he was sitting on. Note. Lovely, and that is the three giants done and the Tawa Jin shrine available. Let's go. And of course, it is just a blessing. Great Thunderblade, thank you very much. How fitting for that final guy. Alright, with those done, we're now going to go way up to Lurlin Village. It's time for that village shrine. Anyway, here we are at Lurlin Village. You can see it just sort of overlooking the place here. It really is a village. It's like just a road of houses even. But anyway, here is our shrine. The Yarin Shrine. Let's go. A weighty decision. You can probably guess what the whole mechanic of this place is. Oh boy. Okay, so first things first. We're going to use a little bit of oh, momentum to whoop, get us up here. We didn't actually need the momentum aspect, but I thought it would be a bit more fun. Next, Guardian Scout. Bye-bye. That was super easy. We're a little overpowered for this place. Sorry, buddy. I will take your stuff, though. Oh, is that an... Damn it. Well, I'll take it anyway. I need an, an Ancient Battle Axe Plus, but oh well. Anyway, for the chest, don't need to overthink it. Just use Magnesis. Gives us a Royal Broadsword. Lovely. And you should be able to see there is a switch right next to the door, which we can use this chest on. Cool. Right, now that we're here, we can progress on to another weighted problem. So for this one, you need to again use the assets from beforehand. I, don't, <laughs> I guess they really just wanted to save on their assets or something, but yeah, you need to actually oh, use this to progress around. So for this, you need to put the chest or the block from earlier onto this one down here, which will lift you up nicely enough for you to reach this guy. Opal. Of course it's Opal. Okay. And once you're here, you can then do the reverse, and it'll put you onto the path to redemption. Or to the monk. Same thing. Let's go to him, and then let's move on. Alrighty, with a nice little view of Lulin Village, we're now going to go down to Mount Dunzol. Right into this little cabin here, just north of the Gamma Cove. So where we actually need to be is here. The Palora, the P Palmarai Ruins. Where we can find Greeny here. Mm. Hi. Ah, sorry about that. I was in the zone. Do you need something? What are you doing? Ah. I was just examining this stone monument. This place has a very spiritual aura to it. Do you feel it? I recently realized that there is writing engraved on this stone monument. So now I'm trying to figure out what exactly is written here. Can I help? Ah, so you're the curious type too. This stone monument was once much larger, but it broke apart during an earthquake a while back. If you really want to help, help me find the missing fragments, will you? They'll be scattered all around. I think the fragments had the same kind of script carved into them. If you can find a fragment, please draw a picture of it and bring it here to me. I'll be finishing my examination of this stone monument. Mm. Oh, right. And the words on the stone monument glow with an eerie light at night. That should make them easier to find. Ah. 
One of them should be right around the corner here. <laughs> Please find that first. Okay, a fragmented monument. We need to find the pieces of the Twilight Princess mirror, it's seemingly, and then we can go and actually get our shrine. Now the first of these can literally be found around the corner. The the ruins are over there, we need to go right here, and what do you know, here is a piece for us. Nicely done. They do glow in the dark, so that can be more helpful for you to find. Otherwise, you know, it's here. Next up, we want to be by this little beach with boxes. Oh, you don't know where that is? It is right here, just in this little cornery bit there. Here is another... that is a barrel. Hold on. Where's my vision? There it is. Right, and the final monument stone piece can be found at the very peak of the Soka Point. This is not the peak of the Soka Point. Here we are at the Soka Point. Now you know the purpose of it. It is a stone monument right here. And with that, we're all done. We can go and give it back to Greeny. Did you find any fragments of the stone monument? I sure did. Never even got to see it glowing, but there you go. There's one. Oh, amazing. Show me the next one. Here you go. Hmm, hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You have more? You look a bit like Beetle. Well, maybe it's just the hair. That's amazing! Ooh. Excellent. Thanks to you, I've got a good shot at deciphering the entire monument. Give me a second to see if I can put this all together. Uh -huh. Wow! Thanks to you, I've deciphered the entire passage. When the two find their place nearly in reverence, the shrine will reveal itself. Mm. Ah! I haven't the foggiest what that's supposed to mean. So now what we need to do is we need to kneel. As the shrine requests. Oh. Garini will do the same. Ha! Huh? Is that it? And doing that opens the way to the shrine properly. The Ka Ya Shrine. And after all that, there's still more to do. Quick thinking is not a blessing shrine. Lordy. But anyway, we need a small key to go get access to the monk first and foremost. So let's take the left past first. Uh, it's not gonna let, oh it is. Okay, so for this, you need to just get along the path. Pretty simple actually. This doesn't take a lot of quick thinking. And then step on the switch. Doing that opens the way to the chest, however, it will probably shut again. Therefore, we're gonna do it with a barrel. I knew it wasn't gonna get the, to the barrel the first time, so I figured I'd just show it off with my body. But it's pretty simple, just carry it side to side on the side panels and put it down for the middle one. That's pretty basic. And we get the lovely small key for it. But if you want the additional optional chest, you gotta go through this way. And with this, it's the same thing, but you gotta be more smart about it. So first things first, hit the switch to open the thing. And it's like, wow, how do I do that one? You switch it off again. Pretty simple stuff, but there you go. Early shrines, I tell ya. I never realized how big chests were. Like, they're like half of Link's size. That's massive. You never think of that. Anyway, another, wow, Royal Claymore. We've already used one this video and broken it, but I'll take a fixed one again. Cool, 52 damage is great. And now with all of that done, first of all, actually, what does Greeny say? Hey. So the two who needed to find their place were you and me. Makes sense. Good job figuring that one out. I sure never would have. Oh, it's you. The shrine's glowing today, too. You aren't just a normal lad, aren't you? Are you? I'm just happy that their mystery was solved, and I want to do more snooping than is absolutely necessary. Cool. All right. And with that, we're now going to go way up to the very end of Mount Dunzel, I guess. 
Kind of. Here we are, you may have seen this shrine way off in the distance when we were dealing with all those Henoxes, but yes, here is the shrine. Don't know why I am suddenly a very bad Russian guy. We are going to Muajim Shrine. This accent is very quickly following me. Oh, look. Isn't this cute? Are you gonna give me an Ancient Battle Axe Plus? I need that for a side quest that I still haven't done. Because I got too advanced when I did the next bit. No. No, you don't. That's a shame. Well, anyway, I'll go defeat this guy and speed things up. Oh, wait, actually. Yes, it is! Oh, I don't know why I thought it was a sword. I'm a real dumbass. But yeah, okay, we're gonna use that definitely for that side quest next. Woohoo! And a royal bow. I'm rapidly trying to get rid of my royal bows because I've got way too many and they just don't disappear. Oh well. Alrighty, and with this very dramatically nighttime aesthetic, which I think I had a red moon earlier, but I, I can't tell, we are done here. There is one more shrine to do in the Faron region, but it will take an entire video to do alone, and that is way off in Toronbo Beach. We are all doing this eventually. I kind of want to do it right before heading up to Hyrule, Central Hyrule. So really, we'll be coming to it soon, since there's only one more location to do after this, and then we're doing that shrine and then the central Hyrule area. But anyway, for now, that is pretty much all there is to do. Next time, tomorrow that being, we're gonna go off and over to collect all of the Koroks in the Faron region, which hopefully won't take us too long, because then after that, we're into proper end game stuff. We're going to locations we've already done, just to fill it all out and complete all that there is there. And then it's time for the final boss. So we are really, really, close to the end of the game. For now though, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.